one does not simply bypass authentication. It's Black Gates protected more than just a capture. And there is evil there that does not sleep. A great eye of the monitoring tool is ever watchful. Hey guys, today we are talking about JSON Web Token authentication flow. But first, let's figure out it once and for all. What the hell authentication is? And how it's different from authorization? Imagine you are attending a fancy party at a mansion. When you arrive at entrance, the security asks to see your invitation card. Authentication is like showing your invitation card to the security. It's a way to prove that you were specifically invited to the party. The security checks the card and verifies your identity before allowing you inside. Once you are inside, you have different levels of authorization. For example, you may have access to the main hall, the buffet area and the dance floor. However, you may not be authorized to enter the private rooms. So authentication is all about proving you were invited to the party, while authorization determines what parts of the body you can access once you're inside. Now let's compare two primary methods of authentication in the web. Session-based and token-based. We'll start with the session-based auth. Let's say we have a client which could be a browser or mobile device and a server written in any modern programming language. As part of a server infrastructure, we have a session storage, which we'll discuss shortly. Here are the steps involved in session-based auth. The user enters their credentials in a login form and sends them to the server. The server verifies the credentials and creates a new session. It retrieves a session ID from the session storage. The server returns a session ID to the client, and the client saves the session ID in a cookie. This allows the client to be identified by server in subsequent requests. When the user wants to access their profile page, the client includes the session ID in the request header. The server search for the session using ID in the session storage. And if the search is successful, the server checks the session and sends back protected data. It works, but there's a bottleneck in this approach. Every request requires a lookup in the session storage, which can affect performance. To improve performance, we can use technologies like Redis to store our session in the memory rather than in database table. This can significantly speed up the lookup process. In real-world scenarios, especially when working with multiple microservices, session-based authentication can become problematic. Each microservice would need to authenticate users against the session storage, introducing additional complexity and potential performance issues. This is where token-based authentication comes into play, as it offers a more scalable and decoupled approach to authentication. Let's take a look at an example of token-based authentication. This example is similar to session-based authentication in many ways, but has one major difference. We don't store session data on the server. Instead, we store a token on the client side and validate it authenticity using signature which simplifies the process. Here are the steps involved in token-based authentication. The user enters their credentials in a login form and sends them to the server. The server verifies the credentials and generates a token, in our case, JWT. The server returns the JWT to the client. Client saves the JWT in a cookie or local storage to be identified by the server in subsequent requests. When the user wants to access their profile page or make authenticated requests, the client includes JWT in the request header. The server verifies the token signature to ensure its authenticity and proceeds to handle requests accordingly, such as returning the protected data. In token-based authentication, there is no need for lookups in a session storage because the token contains all the necessary information to validate the user's identity and permissions. Server can validate the token signature without the need to query the session storage, resulting in improved performance and scalability. So what the hell is JWT? JSON Web Token is an open standard for transmitting data between two parties, like your browser and server, for example. When user sends requests to the server with JWT, server can easily validate the token checking its signature using the secret key. It's important to note that JWTs are not meant to hide data, but rather ensure its integrity and authenticity. The information in the payload can be decoded by anyone who has access to the token. 
Therefore, sensitive information must not be included. The structure of JWT consists of three parts. The header, the payload, and the signature. These parts are separated by dots and base64 URL encoded. The header typically consists of two parts. The token type, which is JWT, and a signing algorithm used. The header is base64 URL encoded to form the first part of JWT. The payload contains the claims or statements about the entity and additional metadata. Claims are stored as key value pairs and there are three types of claims – registered, public and private claims. Registered claims are predefined by JWT specification and include standards like issuer, subject, expiration time, issued at time and more. Public claims are not predefined by the specification but can be used to add custom claims relevant to the application or domain. Private claims are custom claims that are agreed between parties using JWT. The signature is like the digital stamp that ensures the JWT is genuine and hasn't been changed by anyone. It's created by taking the encoded header and a payload along with a secret key or a pair of public-private keys and using a specific signing method mentioned in the header. The resulting signature is then added to the JWT. Let's talk about JWT best practices. First, use HTTPS. Without HTTPS, attackers can intercept and access JWT by listening the network traffic. Set issuer and audience properties in the token. This way, you can check that token was issued by the right body and intended for you and prevent attackers from using someone else's token to access your data. Don't store sensitive information like payment details in the token. Tokens are typically signed, not encrypted, meaning their contents can be seen by anyone. Make sure to set token expiration time short to protect your data. It might be unfriendly for users to relog in every few minutes so we'll talk about how to avoid it just right now. Refresh tokens are like golden tickets that allows you to stay logged into apps without entering your username and password repeatedly. They provide a way to get a fresh token when the old one expires, improving security and making it harder for attackers to misuse stolen tokens. So it works like this. You send boss access and refresh token during signing process. Whenever user access token get expired, Ideally in a few minutes, instead of pushing him to login page, you generate new access token based on refresh token. But because refresh token can also be stolen and used to generate new access tokens, you should implement token rotation strategy. So every few minutes, you can invalidate your refresh token and create a new one. And remember my friend, in the realm of authentication, trust is earned, not given. So choose the authentication method wisely and keep your data shielded from the forces of evil. And of course, hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.